Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And this is going to be a short video and demo of my latest project, which is the farm truck caddy. Now, if you've been in the hobby stores, you've seen these everywhere. But this is my take on a farm truck caddy. Now, I'm using it, in this case, for a coaster holder, coaster holder and napkins. But we're going to take a look at this design and how it's put together. Stay tuned. So the other day I was asked to help uh, straighten out a design that one of my viewers was working on and it was a really neat idea and a neat concept and he was designing a purpose-built coaster holder with the farm truck on it. And I said, you know what? I've had this stupid box of coasters that I've already prepped and was trying to figure out what to do with them. And I said, I love your idea. And I already had, where is she at? My pumpkin truck. I don't know where my pumpkin wagon's at. There it is. I had my pumpkin wagon. And I said, you know, I've got a farm truck. I'll just take this image, edit it, get rid of my pumpkin, create a 3D version. And I come up with this. Now this is my prototype. I'm still. This is still work in progress. I'm getting ready to cut out my first, my first finished <laughs> design. It'll probably go through more iterations before uh, the day's over. But the concept is, I've got this image. I've turned it into 3D, where I've actually got you know the raised fenders, so it looks like it's the the step side or the sport side uh, beds and the fenders like an old 50s truck. 3D. Uh, tires with the hubcap inserts. I don't know how well to show up on camera, but I did a textured finish on the stake bed. And I'll put photographs up there. Got the little pinstripe in the, the wheels. That's a technique with layering the paint. Grill. But inside, I'm actually going to enclose this, make this longer, fill this void. Put another support behind the cab here so i have two separate boxes that are com uh, completely self-contained or separated and that adds some uh stiffness and rigidity i think that's a word to the overall design but let's jump into light burn and get this thing started and start some assembly okay so this is my third or fourth rendition or version of this truck design and I'm sure like I said it'll change again but it's a pretty basic assembly process I've got this laid out and ready to cut it's both sides of the truck and the floorboard and that'll fit on a 12 by 12 piece of wood I have painted that wood before lasering all solid red then I've got this black that's going to be engraved the green layer is also an engraving, but why it's done separately is I've, if we go to my green layer and show you, I'm doing it with a cross hatch, and I'm doing it with a line interval of one millimeter uh, or 25.4 lines per inch. One millimeter uh, line interval, so there's a, spa a millimeter space between each line or 25.4 lines per inch with a cross hatch. I did not bother doing a line after fill here because I'm going to do that line after fill when I do the black and gray. So let's go take a look at the preview. In fact, I'll just select just this one and do a preview. And there you go. You can see the cross hatch and then the line after fill. Now I'm doing the, the engrave, I'm doing it on an offset fill to save time. And let's show you what that's about. Offset fill? What you say? 
All right, well, on my engraved layer, my black layer, it looks like any other SVG or any other engraving you've done, right? Well, if you go over to your black layer settings, <clears throat> in your mode, you have the option to line, fill, or offset fill. Let's put it in fill mode first. And right now it's at 0 .07. Uh, in fact, we'll just, uh, what is it, point 0.1? Yeah, point 0.1 is what a lot of people might use for a fill mode. So let's set that there. I'm not going to change my speed or power settings. I've only just changed the fill mode, all right? So the fill mode at a, a point 0.1 interval. <clears throat> and let's look at the preview of that truck. If we zoom in nice and tight, you can see now that's how that's going to feel. And look at our estimated time down here. 39.37 minutes to do just that one truck. So if we were to do an estimation of this, the preview, that's 1.2 hours just to do this piece of the project. That is absurd. Now, why is it so long? Let's look at our traversal moves. All of that red is wasted time and wasted space. That is where it's traversing the entire width of the body, making that black engraving. And I'll show you. We'll come back here. So, I've, there it is doing the, the cross hatch and doing that stake beds. And that was pretty quick, but now we've got to build the truck and the engraving. It's got to scan that entire thing in order to do that body. So that's one hour and 25 minutes. All right. Now, go back into that black layer. We're going to select Offset Fill. And I'm going to increase this to 350 lines per inch, which is greater than the .08. But I do that to try and get this field as much as possible, but watch what happens. I went to offset field, went to 350 lines per inch and tell it okay. Didn't change my speed or power. And now we look at that preview and it was an hour and 22 minutes. Now it's 33 minutes. We just cut off nearly an hour's time of that engrave. The traversal moves are still on, but where's all that red? Where's all that wasted energy? There's not any. If we look here at what it's doing now, go all the way back. We were doing our stake beds. In fact, I'll play this, and this is at two times speed, but let's see if that's fast enough. Play. Nope, we're going to increase that. Okay, there you go. I'll go away. So it's doing the offset fill engraving. There it is doing that entire perimeter of that particular stake bed. Now it's doing the fender. And I want to zoom in here so you can see what it's doing. That is an offset fill. It is just running around the perimeter of that particular design, engraving the entire time with no wasted energy. Now there's not too many times that you're going to use offset fill because sometimes it can create an undesired outcome but for what I'm doing here with this pre-painted material increasing my line interval I'm able to cut almost an hour off of this project and uh, we'll get to uh, get this off the laser here now of course we're not going to watch all of this uh, in real time there's no need to but I'll show you the the cutout and the assembly process so hang around all right actually why this is on the laser cutting out I'm going to show you real quick how to prep this design for your material. This design will be available on hobowithwood.com for your use purposes. Make them, cut them, take them to your fairs, your craft shows, sell the heck out of them. Make a million dollars, just remember who it was that sold you this thing and made you a millionaire and send me a little something something. So, uh, Let's take a look here. Now this is on the laser, so I'm going to just take Control D, duplicate that, and move this out of the way. So if I have to go back to the laser, I can. But 
First thing you need to do, now I've decided to pre-paint my material. It's all painted solid red. Then you need to take the measurement. You need your thickness of your material. So you need a really good set of calipers to measure your thickness because when it comes to fitment and fit, you want this to be a very tight friction fit. Now I'm using what was sold as three millimeter basswood and I'll have a link to that in the show more section below for the uh, because this is a really good premium product it is a AAA grade uh, very few fillers and voids uh, smooth excellent uh, finishes on both sides of the material so this is premium uh, Baltic birch it's it's this that I've got sold as three millimeters but I'll measure it it comes out right at uh, 2.8 millimeters anywhere from 2.7 to 2.9 uh, so I did an average of about 2.8 millimeters so these slots right now you see all of that's grouped together everything is grouped that's grouped the trucks are grouped but you need to edit the slots for your material thickness to do that you're actually going to just ungroup everything get everything ungrouped once you've done that now you can select individual slots but you do not have to adjust these individually right now if you look at this one slot and come up here and look I've got a width of 2.78 because I said like my my average thickness is 2.8 and to allow for my kerf and to get a real tight fit I do 2.78 on my material and that gives me a really tight fit which requires very little glue I do glue up the edges you'll see that when I go to assemble it but there's no room in the slots and tabs for any glue but if you need to change this let's say you've got material uh, that's measuring um, 3.1 millimeters or 3.2 and you want to actually make them a little bit uh, different size well what you're going to do select the entire thing come up here to your tools resize slots and selection now you're going to do this for your material or else you're going to have a sloppy fit now we need to change the slot width and you'll see now that it's selected all of those as you go through here you can change slot depth slot width or tab height the only thing that you want to mess with is your slot width and if you look here um, I take that back you, you would actually change your tab height too right now we're working with slot width and we know that the material is 2.78 right now because we just checked it but because I've got my tolerance level set up so high it's looking at anything uh, that's uh, old material thickness two millimeters up to a millimeter so I'm, I'm looking plus or minus a millimeter uh, anywhere from one to three millimeters is looking for those slots and it's now it's going to be made 2.78 millimeters so if you've got a very low tolerance those are not going to be recognized depending on what now if I come in here and change my old material thickness and just tell it exactly 2.78 now it sees them because I told it exactly what to look for and now you say well my material is measuring three millimeters well you put in your three millimeters there and tell it okay and now that's going to change all of those slots to three millimeters but now you also need to change your tab height now if we look and take our measurement here that's 2.79 that's 2.7 or 2.8 all right so say okay so now with everything still selected you go right back into tools go back into resize slots and shapes now you're going to change your tab height now here that's recognizing that as a slot and you don't want to mess with that depth we've already done our slot width but you need to change your tab height because if your material is three millimeters you want to have that tab as long as possible to get you as good of connection and secure connection as possible so come in here and change this now what I would recommend doing is if it's measuring three millimeters 
you do not want to have it protruding and where you have an issue with uh, interference with any of the parts that might overlap it because these tabs are actually in the center of the wheels and they are covered up by the hubcaps. So you don't want these proud. So if it's measuring three millimeters, what I would probably do is say 2.9 and if you wanted to do 2.9 uh, five, you know, just you want to be a little less than three millimeters. So I'm gonna say 2.9, say okay. And now that's changed your tab heights, your slot widths, and now it's ready for your material. All right, let's check on the progress of this laser. Okay, so all the pieces are cut out. I'm gonna jump over to my little assembly area and we're going to do a quick time lapse of the assembly process. I kind of got the order messed up because this is my first time putting this prototype together and I left, well, you'll see. I just kind of went, through, I didn't do them in the right order, which made it a little bit challenging. But we got it together. Turned out pretty nice. As I said, this was inspired uh, by a design that one of the viewers asked me to help them out with that they were working on. I had these coasters laying around. I'm like, okay, I've had some coasters and let's make a coaster box. And so that was the idea for this piece. I'm like, okay, I'll drop the coasters in there. And then the front of it, looked a little empty but you don't look bad uh, sitting on the coffee table though that that would look looks a little uh, the void there looks a little empty so I said okay well just so happens it's the perfect fit for napkins so now that could sit on the kitchen table or the coffee table or picnic table uh, you wouldn't use coasters at the picnic table uh, or if you didn't want napkins, salt and pepper shakers, whatever. Put it on the coffee table and that's where you stick your remote controls. Or, <clears throat> if it's not for, uh, it's just got two boxes. So if you didn't want to use coasters, um, or if you did want to use coasters, you could market this to restaurant owners. They can put their name and their logo right here. Um, there's lots of possibilities for this. So I enjoyed making it. I hope you've had some fun watching this. You've learned a few things and the file is available on hobowithwood.com. Check it out, buy the file, download the file, make as many of these as you want to. 
become a millionaire, and then go back up to hobowithwood.com at the top, adopt a hobo. I could appreciate the support. <laughs> so, check it out. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you in the next video.